Robert. Also, gals. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, lights. Today we're talking about graphene. Now, graphene is made of carbon, and so is diamond, and so is graphite. Now, diamond is pretty strong, but graphene is little. Molecule for molecule is stronger, which is quite an impressive feat if you know anything about diamonds. They're very, very strong. Now, diamonds and graphite externally appear to be incredibly different. I mean, one of them is the crumply stuff that you get in pencils. It's cheap, it's black, it's crumbly. And the other one is expensive, clear, and essentially indestructible. I mean, what gives? They're both carbon. Most of you probably have some inkling of the idea that molecular arrangement matters a whole lot. The carbon here is much more in a 3D situation where all of its electrons are being used up and therefore it can bond very tightly. It doesn't let off color because it doesn't have free electrons. It doesn't really conduct well at all because it doesn't have free electrons. Um, graphite, however, does do that pretty well. Now, graphene is a bit different, but actually, though this is the lattice for graphite, the individual sheets right here, if you just separated one of these off from the rest, that would be graphene. Now, you might be thinking, if this thing is stronger than diamonds, why the heck can I do, well, that. <laughs> He's going to be mad about that. <laughs> oh. yeah, the reason is that these actually aren't connected very well. The, it's pretty much the same. The same forces are connecting all of these layers of graphene that connect like tape to things. Tape isn't all that strong, and neither is graphite. In terms of molecular structure, if you look at each atom of carbon, how many connections does each atom have? One. Six. Two. No. Four? Three. Three! Like I said, three! three. Oh, very proud of you. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> now, carbon, some of you might know that it has what it needs to connect to four. What's with the other electrons? Mm -hmm. That's kind of just all around. And one of the unique things is, let me draw up one of those. That's good oh, enough so for our purposes, yeah. even though it's not very good. <laughs> I assume that we can edit this in post. We still have extra electrons. Now, conductivity, it works especially with metals because we have what is called a sea of electrons. This allows them to flow across without having much trouble. What happens with graphene that's so cool is that since it has three connections and it can make four, it has extra electrons which allow it to have something of a C. That makes it incredibly amazing for things in terms of conductivity. One of the really big conductive things that it's being used to develop right now is computer chips. Silicon is what we use right now, and though it's really good, this stuff is ten times better at it. It's just good at everything. Not everything. It's not good at not conducting. So, when you're looking at graphite, you're actually looking at a whole bunch of pieces of graphene. The difference is that when electricity tries to go across, instead of having just an easy C to go across, it goes, hey, why don't I go there? And then there, and there, and there and it heats it up without doing much. But if you get, if you isolate an individual strip, then it will conduct outrageously well, better than silver, which is what I understand to be the best at that, which is a pretty good thing for technology. As we're learning more about it, it has also become clear that it absorbs shock ridiculously well. One, couldn't we, like, make synthetic graphene so we wouldn't have to go through the like splitting process? We can kind of, but it's, even when we're doing things synthetically, it's really hard to keep all of them apart. And then also, why is it said that it uh, 
produces its own power source. I'm assuming you're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't appear to be showing up. How's everyone today? Br brief intermission. Yeah. Now, uh, something called Brownian movement. It's pretty much how a bunch of things colliding <laughs> with essentially anything will allow it to move. What we figured out is if we place a sheet of graphene between the two electrodes, we can actually harness this Brownian motion, and that can create electricity. It's not a fossil fuel. There's no way we can run out of Brownian motion and still obey any of the laws of physics. If we could harness this in large amounts, then we could make batteries that would never have to be really... In theory, if we were to use this properly and we were to get enough of it, there's been actually even talk of making an elevator to space because it would be so incredibly light and so incredibly strong that you could make things ridiculously tall like that. If only we could figure out how to make enough of it.